Uh, the first project to do was build ourselves a gantry and um, we decided to build rather than buy because we have some limitations with the space we're working with. We've got the beams overhead and that kind of stuff and, and so actually it would be very hard to find a gantry that would fit. Uh, the reality of building in a shed like this is actually it's not quite tall enough so um, our gantry can't quite pull things up to the height that we would like to. If we were outside and we had lots more clearance then um, we would have built it quite a bit taller. Also, we were very lucky to have some scrap steel available to us we could use. Now, the design of it is loosely based on what Doug Jackson did with SV Seeker, so if you want to know a bit more about that, check out svseeker.com and search for Gantry, and uh, you'll find some information there. Uh, obviously, from that design, we had to modify it a bit in order to kind of meet the requirements that we had. Uh, ours are quite a bit smaller than Doug's, and um, we used like a beam calculator to work out the kind of capacity that we would be able to use. With anything like this, I think it's a good idea to like massively overbuild. It, so it is much stronger than we need and uh, the limiting factor is the chain hoist which is rated to up to a tonne. That means if anything were to break it would be the chain hoist. But saying that, nothing we've got to lift is even that heavy. The steel we used was 7 inch by 4 inch I-beam and 3 inch angle iron which was I think 4 mil thick. Definitely the hardest part was getting everything to fit and get square and that kind of stuff. Using a digital spirit level I found was really helpful and also a framing square like um, a timber framing style framing square. Now the only bits we bought for it were the casters, uh, two swivelling and two straight casters. They are rated for a ton each and the mounting plates for the casters and then also the beam trolley and the chain hoist itself. To the bottom of the beam is about 4.2 metres and I think it's about 4.6 wide total. We put ours on casters because we have some fairly specific requirements in terms of getting under beams and attaching the bases to the legs. I used a fairly similar style to what Doug did with cutting a slot in the upright. However, we had to modify it slightly as we don't have a plasma cutter. And so I ground a slot in both. And that actually meant that, that the, it was very easy to get the both parts square because it was kind of like two slots fitting together. With rusty old metal like this, the most important thing is definitely preparing the material really well. So grinding back to clean metal so that you have a good welding surface. To mount the casters, I bought uh, mounting plates for them and cut out part of the bottom of the I-beam. And then used a couple of supporting braces to make sure that it wasn't going to sort of bend out of shape. Once we finished building, we obviously needed to flip it upright and I was lucky enough that my dad could pop down for an afternoon and just help me with his JCB. Because we did it out of scrap, I think things like grinding it, grinding back to clean metal, took a lot of extra time. So it took about five days to build total. And uh, it's been absolutely brilliant having it. Uh, I don't think we could build the boat without it. Thanks for watching and if you want to find out more, check out some of our other videos.